Hey everyone, today I'm going to continue rebuilding my lathe. I will explain what and why I am doing, and I think it would be a great opportunity to answer some of your questions. Let's get started! The most common question is, I want to build my own CNC. Where to begin? Purpose. In other words, what type of product do you want to make? What type of material do you want to process? Is it wood, stone, metal, plastic? Will it be mass or unit production? The answers to these questions are probably the most important. For example, you want to mill plywood. Then there is no point in building a machine larger than the size of a plywood sheet. Also, the machine should not be very heavy since the cutting forces are low and you do not need a long travel high along the z-axis. Rebuilding is better than building from scratch. Let me explain. Most likely you do not have whole fleet of machines and tools necessary to build a CNC from scratch. Using my example, theoretically, I could have welded a structure of the required shape and size for this machine. But then I would have needed to mill all the planes to install the guides, spindle, tailstock and so on. No matter how good a welder you are, it is impossible to get a perfect surface after welding. And they simply don't have a huge milling machine to fit this frame. Not to mention the fact that using ready-made machines like mine is much cheaper. I bought this machine for less than the price of scrap metal. Simplicity and maintainability. Resist the temptation to install all the toys you can find on your machine. Remember, you need to program it and maintain it. For example, automatic tool changing is a great thing, but it's more expensive, more difficult to program and more difficult to repair. I make individual units, so I don't need it. But if I were in mass production, this is the first thing I would pay attention to. Also another important point, some parts are easier to replace than to repair. For example, my 2.2 kW spindle that I use in both machines. This is the cheapest Chinese spindle at $200. Its closest branded competitor from Germany costs $3,600. Is it better? Of course! Will it last 18 times longer in my humid and abrasive conditions? I do not think so. That's why I choose the cheapest one and treat it as a consumable item. When it dies, I don't even try to figure out what's wrong with it, I just install a new one. I also prefer to use stepper motors rather than servos for this reason. If I can perform the same task with both motors, I prefer a cheaper and simpler device. But I'm not saying that the stepper motors are better. Where high precision and high speeds are required, a servo drive is indispensable. Components of the shelf are better choice. Such components as motors, rail guides, ball screws and so on are better to buy those that are always in stock from your dealer. When a part breaks, and it does, you can replace the broken or worn component much faster and not to wait weeks or maybe even months for it to be ordered and delivered. From my experience, I will say that parts never break before or at the end of the work. It always happens during the manufacturing process, and until new parts are delivered, the work remains where it was. Technical drawings Any construction begins with a drawing. Not only because it is necessary, but because it is significantly simplifies and, most importantly, speeds up the further manufacturing process. To draw with a pencil on a paper or in a modern CAD environment is up to you. No matter how long it takes you even to learn how to make drawings, it will all pay off many times over when you start making the machines. Moreover, I advise you not to make some metal parts right away. Draw the part, 
then cut it out of the plywood or print it to make sure all the dimensions are correct and only then mill the necessary part. I have what I call one engineer's problem. For example, hundreds of engineers work to decide where to put one button in your car. On the other hand, I come to work one morning and put it where I think it will be okay. In other words, any person's best attempts to do something right will be many times less successful than the efforts of a large team of specialists. So prototyping is the way to go. Now let me explain what I am doing. In my last video here I installed one motor to check my power calculations. Everything went well and now I have disassembled the gearbox and it's time to install the motors properly. To do this I need the motor shaft to be parallel to the spindle shaft. So I'll use this shaft that I have just removed since it's already parallel and I just need this oddly shaped mount to hold the motor in place. I also install some sort of bracket here and connect both parts with an adjusting screw. This assembly will allow me to accurately adjust the gap between gears. It looks like I have managed to screw up with the distances between the holes, but they are easy to fix. That's why templates are needed. Well, everything else seems to be working, and in the next video I can mill these parts from steel. And that's all for today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Meanwhile, thank you for watching. I'll see you in two weeks.